arose for Emily's point of view in the role of narrator. This essay focuses on the point of view in arose for Emily. It explains why Faulkner used the first-person plural in the short story's narration. In analyzing and understanding works of literature, one of the key factors is the point of view. Point of view shapes the reader's perception of the story, based on the attitude the narrator assumes towards the described events. There are several varieties of point of view. On the one hand, it depends on the person who is telling the story, first, second, or third person view. On the other hand, it is determined by the level of the narrator's awareness, omniscient or limited omniscient point of view. William Faulkner's short story Arose for Emily is a curious example of a first-person limited omniscient point of view, which brings the readers closer to the related events on one hand, and demonstrates the mysterious nature of the narrator on the other hand. What point of view is Arose for Emily? Throughout the whole story, the narration occurs in first-person plural, we as the pronoun Faulkner uses to emphasize that the events are related by an eyewitness or a whole group of eyewitnesses. This we represents a collective image of the town society and provides an account of not only Miss Greer's son's story but the history of several epics. The collective character of the narrator reveals itself in such phrases as our whole town went to her funeral, we were not pleased exactly, as is our custom, we believed, we remembered, we knew, etc. The outward authority of such statements, together with the confident predictions of this collective image concerning Miss Greer's son's private life, creates an impression of a know-all, or omniscient, narrator who is far-seeing enough to provide for the future course of events. The emotionality of this collective reaction to every little occurrence in Miss Greer's son's life suggests that the pronoun we may stand for the community of town gossip who want everything done their way and are outraged if things go out of their control. The Role of Collective Narrator in Arose for Emily the outward authority of the collective narrator, which should generally inspire the reader's trust, is therefore shaken by the idea that this narrator is a mere town gossip, spreading the rumors simply for the fun of it. Therefore, the omniscient narrator's opinion of Miss Greer's son's actions as weird and non-complying is questioned by the suspicious character of the narrator as a gossip. Moreover, there are several small details in the short story that further complicate the mystery of the narrator's personality. In the majority of we statements, Faulkner introduces such phrases as people people in our town, believed, and people were glad. And here emerges a question, why should Faulkner use the word people instead of the normal we? The obvious answer is that this is done to contrast the narrator with the rest of the crowd. Adding to this contrast is the final scene of breaking into the secret room in Miss Greer's son's house. For one thing, the narrator provides a foreshadowing by saying already we knew that there was one room in that region above stairs which no one had seen in forty years, how on earth did they know about it? In such a light, the narrator appears to be someone who initiated into Miss Greer's son's personal mystery. For another thing, in the scene of breaking in the narrator suddenly switches to the pronoun they, they held the funeral on the second day, they waited until Miss Emily was decently in the ground. Although the normal we reappears soon afterward, this sudden change in the narrator's relationship with the town crowd cannot go unnoticed. The mysterious first-person narrator, who outwardly seems to represent the town's society, is intrigued by the knowledge of intimate details and casual opposition to the rest of the people. This has a crucial impact on the reader's opinion of Miss Greer's son since it suggests that she should not be taken the way gossips judge her and requires a deeper understanding of a unique and lovely personality. A Rose for Emily is emblematic of the Southern Gothic genre, a unique element of American literature. The plot structure of Southern Gothic writing relies heavily on irony, unusual events, or the supernatural typical of Gothic writing. Southern Gothicism, however, utilizes the aforementioned tools to describe the cultural persona as well as explore social issues pertinent to the American South. Most importantly, mental-slash-spiritual deformity as opposed to physicality exceedingly permeates Southern Gothic style in terms of characters, settings, and situations. Prevalent antebellum euphoric stereotypes such as the contented slave, the chivalrous gentleman, the demure Southern Belle, and repugnant traits such as egotistical self-righteousness, racial bigotry, etc., fading Southern Belle, are common qualities of the protagonists. Conclusion 
Despite these cringe-inducing traits, the characters maintain a certain level of interest to the reader. William Faulkner, a revered novelist, short story writer, and essayist among a cadre of prolific Southern writers, Flannery O'Connor, Erskine Caldwell, Carson McCullers, Eudora Welty, Tennessee Williams, Truman Capote, Harper Lee, to name a few, of the 20th century whose Gothic works highlight disturbing aspects of Southern culture, human frailty, and cruelty. Authoring over 120 short stories, diction, cadence, and stream of consciousness were Faulkner's unique trademarks. A Rose for Emily exemplifies Southern Gothicism but most importantly tragedy spurred by an unfulfilled life compounded by rejection and the absence of true love. A Rose for Emily is considered one of William Faulkner's best short stories and truly substantiates why his literary legacy will forever have an indelible influence on American literature.